This is the UCLA PTSD Reaction Index Automated Platform. The Automated Platform is a fully locally installed application for Windows or for Mac. That means all patient data is locally stored and accessed, and BHI does not receive any protected health information from the platform. On the home screen, you'll see a number of resources for clinicians, including the desk reference and user guide, which recommend best practices for using the automated platform. To start a new assessment, click New Assessment. From here, you'll be able to either add a patient and put in their demographic information, or if you're doing a reassessment to an existing patient, simply type their name into the search bar and select them from the list. Then you can select the tests that you're looking to administer. The automated platform currently features the brief screen, self-report, and two parent caregiver versions of the UCLA PTSD Reaction Index. We'll select the parent caregiver report. For the parent caregiver version, it will ask you to fill in the caregiver information, including their name and their relationship to the child, so whether they're a biological parent, foster parent, grandparent, or so on. Then click Begin Assessment. If you've already done an assessment for this patient, the automated platform will prompt you to skip over the trauma history section of the reaction index. This allows you to go straight to the symptom scoring section if there have been no updates to this patient's trauma history. We will go ahead and click Update. This will bring you to the first section of the reaction index, which is the trauma history section. On the left side, you'll see a navigation bar of all different types of trauma that may be applicable to the patient. You can easily click through, select the ones that may be applicable to this particular assessment. If you answer no to one of these questions, you'll simply skip to the next one. Clicking next will do the same thing. If you answer yes to one of these questions, it will go into more details. It will allow you to fill in the trauma details proximity to the event, whether they were victim, witness, learned about, or other, as well as the ages at which they experienced this traumatic event. We'll fill out a couple of these so you can see what it looks like on the scoring report. Once you finish the trauma history section, you skip all the way down to the bottom and hit next. That will bring you to the second portion of the reaction index, the PTSD symptom scale. Each of the 41 questions on the PTSD symptom scale feature this graphic showing the frequency of occurrence of symptoms. Each question will also feature the DSM-5 category and the symptom type that each question is asking about for clinical reference. On the PTSD symptom scale, you're not able to skip a question. All questions must be answered before continuing. Additionally, for the parent caregiver version, you have the option to select don't know for any of these symptom types. If you select don't know more than five times, it will not be considered a clinically valid test at the end of the assessment. You can either click through each question, or you can use the number keys and enter key. Each of these questions is identical to the paper PDF version of the UCLA PTSD Reaction Index. Once you've completed the PTSD symptom scoring section of the Reaction Index, you'll be prompted to fill in clinical impressions or progress notes. Here you can add any sort of context that you might want to see on the scoring report at the end of the test. This could be if you think the patient was underreporting or overreporting certain symptoms, or any other context that you think may be relevant. Then you can click Finish Assessment and that will bring you to the scoring report. On the scoring report, you'll see the demographic information for the patient as well as the caregiver interviewed at the top. Below that will be the trauma summary section. So you see the trauma type, the details of the trauma, the exposure or proximity to the trauma, as well as the age ranges which they occurred in this nice little graphic. Below that, you'll see the PTSD symptom score over time. On this particular test, the patient scored a 41. You see that all the way on the data point on the right here. Anything above 35 is predictive of meeting full diagnostic criteria for PTSD. As you reassess a patient throughout the treatment cycle, you can see how they've been trending over time in their total score. And below, you can see how they've been trending over time 
by each individual symptom type. This brings us to the symptom scores by symptom category section. This includes the B, C, D, and E type DSM-5 symptoms. Each symptom is scored on a scale of low, moderate, and high severity, as indicated by our stoplight score legend here. On the far right, you'll see the assessment that we just did. To the left of that, you'll see two previous assessments. This allows you to easily track throughout the cycle of treatment how the patient has been trending in each of these symptom types. Below this, you'll have the DSM-5 PTSD diagnosis. So whether or not each of the B through E type symptoms are present, whether the symptom duration is greater than one month, whether the symptoms cause clinically significant distress or impairment, as well as whether or not the A1 and A2 type symptoms are present to diagnose with a dissociative subtype of PTSD. If all of these boxes are checked and you have a score of above 35, you have grounds for diagnosing with PTSD. Below this is the distress and impairment scale, again with the stoplight scoring structure. This measures whether or not the symptoms are affecting the child's ability to function at home, in school, in peer relationships, and in their developmental progression. In this section, rather than showing the symptom type, we'll show the actual question that was asked on the assessment. Below this is the clinical impressions and progress notes that we filled out at the end. Again, this can be anything that's relevant to this particular assessment that you may want to have on your scoring report. From here, you're able to click print report in the bottom left. This will prompt you to either print out a paper copy for your physical records or save a PDF to your device so you can upload it to your EHMR system. Once you complete the assessment, you can click close assessment. If you ever want to go back and see a past scoring report, you can go to the assessments history section and search in that patient's name again. You can then select the assessment that you want to see and view their scoring report again. In the assessments history section, you'll be able to see up to five different assessments at once. So you can have a full comprehensive view of how the patient has been scoring throughout their cycle of treatment. That concludes the demo of the UCLA PTSD Reaction Index automated platform. Please visit reactionindex.com today to book a full demo or receive a quote for the automated platform.